there's some really valuable things uh, in using the Max for Live specific objects, like the dials and the sliders and stuff like that. First of all, you get access to all of the saving, uh, the saving functionality of Live itself. There are really, there are really two different uh, ways that uh, your patches get saved. One is that when you save a project that you have an active patch in, that information is saved with the project with its current settings. So uh, much like any other device, if you, bring up, if you bring up one of the Max for Live devices, you twiddle on it while you're working and then you save your project, all of, that, all of those parameters are saved with the, uh, with the device when it's saved. Um, also, there's the ability to take, if you find something you really like and you know you're going to want to use over and over again, there's the ability to save a, a device's settings as a preset. So in this case, I can take my, my, my six and one here and uh, decide, okay, I'm going to save that as uh, funny bit one. And then I can, I can rank it up to uh, something more sensible and save it as mom's better patch. And now I can, I can either grab these presets and just drop them into place where it'll come in with its values, or uh, I can take advantage of the hot, hot swap feature of, of live devices and basically just swap in settings uh, to test out a bunch of different presets. So what, you, what we see is that a lot of the uh, kind of headache of preset handling within Max is sort of taken care of by the live environment the other thing that we that we gain with uh, with using the Max for Live uh, objects is the ability to uh, is to automate the functions real easily. So I'm going to go back in this patch and I'm going to take a look at these two objects, and I'm going to give them unique names so that I can actually uh, understand what the heck they are. So this one is going to be Bit Depth, and we'll call this Bit Depth so we can see the difference. And you'll notice that it actually changed the, the name. So if I right save this it. now, and then I go into, I'm gonna go into range view. If I look at, the, at this, I, uh, I can grab my device and I now have those two, uh, in fact, an inappropriately spelled <laughs> um, I have I have access to my, uh, to these things, I can also, uh, take advantage of this with within clip automation and basically just draw these in and, and they will automate as the as the song plays you can take advantage of clip automation in any other place where you can attack a parameter so uh, we'll talk later about about instrument racks but the ability to attach a parameter to an in instrument rack macro is also available but one of the things I want to suggest a lot of us here at the conference are people who teach uh, teach Max, and one of the things to consider is how valuable Max for Live is going to be in the educational environment. Uh, one of the things that I experience when I'm teaching Max is that um, I, I will get people really excited about being able to make their own ring modulator or make their own delay line, and then um, I, I let them off into the world, and then I'll get 5,000 emails saying, but how do I make how do I make all the sound, sound that feeds into my ring modulator? And what do I do with the output of that? Where does it go? And how can I make this uh, fit inside the other devices I'm using? What's nice about, te what's gonna be nice about teaching with Max for Live is that so much of the infrastructure is already built for you. You don't have to introduce patter very much in order to show device preset saving. You don't have to necessarily get into the, all the audio file playback in order to show how you affect an audio file, uh, uh, an audio file playback with devices that you create. I think it's going to be a phen phenomenal extension to uh, for all of us who have to do educational work with the Max. Uh, with Max, the other thing is from a production standpoint, it really offers the opportunity to. Uh, create effects and create production systems that are totally unique to your work or to your performance environment. I think it's going to be phenomenal for both production and performance. I uh, 
with things like this loop shifter, I fully expect to be able to squirt out 40 to 50 sides before this thing gets released. And uh, but you know, because you can do this automated work, it really does it really does give you the opportunity to play around with some generative algorithms in what would otherwise be sort of a standard production environment. So uh, with that, I'm going to close, but I hope that you found this interesting. If you have any questions, please grab me in the hallway or tackle me during lunchtime. Um, the other thing is we are shortly going to be expanding our beta test. So if you're not already in our, we have a very small kind of uh, initial launch of the beta group. But if you're interested in being involved in the beta as we expand it further, please get in touch with me, drop me your card or your email, or else get a card from me and email me uh, because we're going to want to have people just like you helping us out with this beta. So thank you very much.